So the next talk will be Deep Wrinkles, Accurate and Realistic Clothing Modeling, and it will be presented by Zora Lena. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to present a joint work with uh, Daniel Kremers and Tony Tang that I did while I was at uh, Facebook Reality Labs as an intern. And our topic is clothing modeling, which is one of the last aspects in virtual world which actually uh, cannot be animated realistically. Do I have to hold it somehow? <laughs> ah, thanks. Uh, okay, so if you have applications like video games or VR, uh, basically uh, everything in this world can be rendered photorealistically, but in clothing you always have some kind of simplification. And the reason is that um, it's not actually that clothing is hard to render, but that the actual geometry of the clothing changes with the body movement. If you imagine you have like a closed avatar that is uh, controlled by the user, then you can imagine that this movement will be unpredictable and it's happening all the time and it has to be processed in real time. And this is a real problem because in offline you just do physical simulation, everything looks really nice, uh, but physical simulation is way too slow for, um, for real-time applications. And this is not... Okay, and the reason is um, that there are just so many factors going uh, into, into the small wrinkles and how they uh, look like. So uh, they can depend on uh, the material properties of the fabric and on external obstacles. Thank you very much. Um, great. And they also depend on the body shape and on the motion history. So it's really important what happened beforehand. For example, if you jump, there will be some kind of effects that actually take place later. Uh, but so you have to remember that this jump action uh, took place. And then, of course, you have just so much variation in clothing. They can be the same type of clothing made of different material uh, with different details, and all these things actually go into especially the small wrinkles. Uh, and if you imagine that you can, Im or you already know that's why physical simulation is so slow, and this is why when you see actually fine wrinkles on clothing in uh, any virtual world, it will just be static texture and not, not moving at all. Uh, so the goal of this project was to uh, learn a model that can actually generate high frequency but realistic wrinkles that also uh, move with arbitrary motion sequences. So if you have a, an unseen motion sequence, you still want to create uh, high frequency realistic wrinkles. And I'm going to show you uh, a little bit. So this is what's roughly state of the art right now. So you can create nice moving folds, but they're really smoothed out. And you can directly tell, like, this is not a real, real clothing. Whereas uh, this is the result that we are going to show, so we can really create uh, high frequency details that still move dynamically over the surface. Uh, and how did we do this? So uh, to learn a, a model, we actually had to get some, some data to learn it from, and we actually took scans from real persons uh, wearing one piece of clothing, and then we registered uh, the clothing, uh, general clothing template to this, and you can see some examples here. So these are different shirts on different people. And in general, our uh, registration error was smaller than one centimeter. But if you actually compare this to the high resolution scan, uh, you can see that in this one centimeter, there's a lot of the small things that are going on there. And this is really something that makes it unrealistic. And one uh, possibility is, of course, always to just increase the resolution of the template, but it's not the final solution. It will just make all later steps really uh, more complicated. So what we do instead is we use normal maps. I will just give a quick recap. So normal maps are just images uh, where the color indicates the normal direction. And then you basically wrap this image around the, uh, the mesh. 
and the render will pretend that at this pixel position, it's not the face normal, but the normal from the uh, normal map. Uh, and you can see here, there's one high resolution mesh and a low resolution mesh with a normal map, and they look basically the same. This is a really good solution. And we can apply this because we have this uh, course registration from previously, and we have this really detailed normal information from the scan. And if we combine these two into one, we can render really nice images of clothing. So here, just the shirt is rendered with, our, with the normal map, and the rest is just textured. OK. This is how it looks uh, animated. So you can see there's a lot of nice details. And they move around smoothly, of course, because we scanned it from the real world. And this is just projected, uh, projecting the information. You can also see sometimes there were holes in the scan because something was not visible. And this shows up as noise here. OK. So now the real point is we actually want to apply this to new information. So we don't want to take a high resolution scan of everything, but maybe we want to do some post tracking uh, on Kinect data and then still get a nice rendering for the clothing. So we're going to do it in two steps. First, we're going to have a neural network that can go from post sequences to the core shape. And then we're going to have a second neural network that will create really detailed normal maps for the core shape. Good. First, the first one. So what are we trying? So we want to uh, go from the pose, uh, pose to the core shape, of course. And we want to generalize to new poses within reason. So of course, if you never saw what happens when you lift your arm, there's no way uh, you can know what will happen. Uh, and then we want to take into account previous movements uh, and the velocity, because as I said before, this is really important for some applications where uh, some uh, effects are delayed. And we realized this with an LSTM encoder-decoder. I will not go into detail about this, but you can come to the poster and ask later. So basically, as input, we take a vector of the joint parameters, which just describe the pose, and the velocity and the acceleration of the uh, root of the entire shape. And uh, as the output, we get uh, the shape coefficient for the current frame. Uh, the input is not just for the current frame, but also for previous frames, such that we get this temporal information. The output is the shape coefficient for the current frame. And the shape coefficient is for a statistical model. I will just use it as a black box here. It will just give you the 3D coordinates of the course shape. Uh, and the LSTM is really helpful here because it allows the network to decide, uh, first of all, to access previous information from previous time steps, and also to, to decide which of those are important uh, now and which it wants to use to create the sh course shape. This is how it looks like. And you can see there are not a lot of details. But I told you before, you can add all the details with the normal maps. The only thing that's important is that um, all the information that cannot be encoded in the normal map has to be there. So for example, when you lift your arm, the boundary of the shirt should lift up. Uh, this cannot be put in the normal map. And these kind of deformations are uh, encoded here. So what's left to do is, is to generate a detailed normal map. Uh, and we will uh, create a new training set for that. So we have all these high resolution uh, data from the, from the scan that we did. And we create a low resolution uh, pair for that by just taking the normals from the course shape, linearly interpolating in between. And this will create us a new normal map. If you would render it, then you would just um, get the same shape again. Uh, but we pair it with the high resolution information, and we will train a neural network to go from the low resolution to the high resolution. OK, what are the requirements? First, our results should be temporal consistent. Uh, why is this important? Because it could be that you just render for each frame, you render a really nice image, and then you show them after each other in an animation, and you see that. Uh, Although they are really nice, like the folds jump around a lot. And then everyone will be able to tell this is not real. Uh, second, the, the model should preserve the structure of the image. This is important because the normal map is really fixed. So the pixel, every pixel is fixed to a location on the mesh. And there should be no spatial noise, because this will show up in the rendering immediately. And of course, in the end, we want to have really detailed and realistic uh, wrinkles. Uh, we realized this uh, with a conditional GAN. Uh, we just input low resolution normal map, and output is hi high resolution normal map. I will not go into the details. I'm running a little bit out of time. 
Uh, so there are just three, three parts that really realize the three requirements that I gave you. So the first one is we don't only input one normal map, we also input uh, the normal map from the previous frame. Uh, and then we can encourage temporal consistency with that. And then the generator has a UNet and it has skip connections. And the skip connections really allow the network to really preserve the structure of the low resolution normal map. Uh, and our discriminator has a patch scan, uh, and that really encourages high frequency realistic details on the result. Okay, how does it look like? So these are just the normal maps that we can create. And in the output, you can see that there are a lot of details and they're in the right positions, but compared to the target, they are actually mm -hmm. smoothed out a little bit. And more interestingly, how does it look rendered? So here you can see, uh, like really, like the rendering looks really good and the small, small folds, they really move over the surface nicely. Like also a different sequence. And you can see that there's a little bit of noise and it's learned from the training data and this comes from these holes in the scans that sometimes are there, so probably a little bit of pre-processing on the high resolution normal maps would uh, improve this. Um, then one other important thing is that you don't only want to apply your results to the person that you scanned uh, the garment on. So we applied our uh, results to a different body shape and it works really well if you're not too far away. So the problem is because we, we learn on the normals, um, if your body has different normals than the one that was scanned on, this will uh, create problems, but otherwise it works good. Okay, then you were probably asking yourself, can we only do shirts? No, we cannot. So these are really recent results also on scan that we can also do. Yes. So in conclusion, I showed that uh, we could really create a pipeline that was able to create uh, high frequency and realistic wrinkles that move, uh, that can be animated smoothly on the surface. Uh, and the neural network were really able to, to generalize these really complicated dynamic behavior uh, and all these dependencies to a certain extent. Thank you very much. We will be at the next poster session at Boost 89, and we will be happy to give you further details or discuss about anything. Yeah, there's time for one, maybe two questions. Everyone a bit tired? Ah, there's one. Uh, so what if uh, you have some patterns on the T-shirt? Would that be still realistic? Have you, have you tried to do something like that? So you mean if we can still scan it or if we can just put it on the result? Uh, the second one. Yes, we can do that. So we, we also we have some example of that. We put texture on the shape. You can see that uh, it's actually it's really realistic. So it doesn't slide over the surface or something. Thanks. Thank you very much for great work. Uh, you mentioned some limitations, but I wonder one limitation is the visibility. So some part of the wrinkles are not visible. You like using the default smooth surface uh, to get visibility, which pixel is visible. And you seem to see artifacts that really high frequency wrinkles. Do you think that's actually a cause of the artifacts? So maybe visibility doesn't matter. You mean because then in, in some part become invisible, you shouldn't render. But you like using true. default smooth mesh for maybe depth buffering. So uh -huh. yeah, some, some pixels become invisible, mm -hmm. the wrinkle, but you're not modeling that, I assume. Right, right. Yeah, there's just, just so it's not random stuff, but it whatever was from the scan. Yeah, yes. So, so if, if it's, if it's uh, invisible, then it's also invisible, of course, uh, when you animate it in the end. But sometimes you have still some noise from the scanner that was actually visible, but not from the cameras in the scanner. And then you get holes that should be visible, but were not in the scan. Yeah, thank you. OK, any more questions? If not, let's thank the speaker again.